I believe we are going to see the golden era of cloud computing in the next decade. And I believe the services that it will offer will drive the digital transformation of this world. Technology change is actually slowing down compared to maybe like 10 years ago. That's not a bad thing. It means we've seen a potential eruption of the application side rather than the technology and research side. Our ability to place data and place processing wherever it needs to be and leverage that data and leverage that processing wherever it is, is going to be the big push moving forward. And the technology is starting to arrive and the capabilities are starting to arrive to make that happen. So there's quite a bunch of interesting things when we think about the future. I guess supersonic travel, greener energy, and food crisis being solved. One thing that I'm like super excited about, and I think it's probably going to be happening in the next five to ten years, is the adoption of green energy in especially the transportation industry. So over the next five to ten years, we are likely to see advancements in autonomous driving, and autonomous driving fueled by a combination of the cloud and the edge and onboard computing that's going to be there on the cars. We will shift entirely from human-driven vehicles to self-driving vehicles that talk to each other and talk to the road so that your traffic movement, your route selection to get from point A to point B or to get to multiple points will all be rendered smart, rendered intelligent so that every vehicle that shares a certain road network is delegated or allocated the fastest, most efficient route possible, while at the same time coordinating minimization of congestion on the road and ensuring road safety. Imagine the, the trucking industry. Right? In the past, every truck runs on its own. Now imagine every truck has a sensor or like a GPS sensor that streams data to a you know like a distribution center we're basically able to see which part of the places are the hardest areas and we can steer these kind of trucks away to some you know like lower low places another very similar um, case which is the aviation industry actually we worked with uh, an Alibaba's headquarters city Hangzhou they built an aviation project and that got deployed in Hangzhou's airport Using a combination of you know like GPS information and uh, like a video surveillance cameras, we can build a digital twin of that airport, and as a result, we can figure out which runway is the most congested, and and that provides a much clearer picture for the ATC folks to operate that airport much more efficiently. That's good for the passengers. That's good for the bike companies. That's good for fuel consumptions and green industry. So. Kind of cute, and we like it. Artificial intelligence is going to be a key area where we're going to see changes. We will see technologies and vision and speech processing becoming more prolific. One example of this might be something called as cognitive wearable assistance. You could imagine people wearing smart and sleek AR glasses that are actually used to give, let's say, people with Alzheimer's uh, navigation instructions when they get disoriented in the middle of the city center. Our doctors need to spend quite a long time kind of memorizing what kind of medicines, what kind of symptoms leads to different diseases. But fundamentally, there's quite a bunch of things that we can use AI to assist them. And the doctor can basically, you know, like, uh, like check with the patient and identify symptoms, but he doesn't really have to go through like three stacks of books to find out what that specific cause it is. We can use an AI as an assistant to doctors to solve that problem. Utilizing computer vision and ML for early detection of medical issues. So as we connect to our Bluetooth devices and we can allow our Bluetooth devices to keep track of our vitals as we're going along throughout our lives, we can already start to detect patterns and maybe raise concerns early on for early detection. Every time we talk about AI, our common fear is that it's going to be replacing our jobs. One thing that we haven't realized in developed worlds, there's actually a scarcity in supplies, especially on the medical and healthcare systems. In China, we have a very low doctor to patient or doctor per capita kind of ratio. So we really want to make sure that the doctors are spending their eight hours a day treating as many patients as possible. AI could basically make one doctor work 10 times more efficient, and that's usually a good thing.
If I have a robotic system that works on a factory, it's able to store its own data and process its own maintenance records and basically do what it needs to do to operate it's on its own, whether it's connected to a centralized system or not. So therefore, factories can run with very little outage. Some major companies have already tested autonomous drones or autonomous vehicles, pick up a product that a customer has purchased or ordered, or well, this can happen B2B as well, where an autonomous vehicle pick up an item directly from the factory floor, not even the warehouse, and then deliver it to the retailer to stack or position in a physical shop space. So what we are looking at in terms of the future that's within reach is that from production starting from the very raw materials that enter a factory space to the warehouse to the delivery to a business retailer or a physical store or directly to a customer is entirely automated, entirely humanless. I would say robotics will probably help in places where there is a dangerous environment and if there is like a disaster recovery. And today in China, we see quite a lot of robot assistance in hotels and other places. I think that could be, be ex can extended to quite a lot of other use cases, like job for the dog that leaves blind people. I mean, robots can do a very good job in humanitarian tasks. So the role of the cloud in the advancement of technology over the next five to 10 years is going to be diverse. One thing that I'm really kind of like excited to see cloud power in is kind of like small and medium businesses, businesses, but still being able to physically connect with you down the road. And we are having a very nice close relationship both online and offline. If you look at where the innovations are occurring, you know, it's not from the Global 2000 companies. They're consuming innovations and perfecting innovations for sure. But the ability to have small upstarts are able to take technology and moving into the next level. And I think that's a good thing. I kind of hope that one day AI will become like a really close friend that we can consult with. And cloud will be basically carrying that friend to all of us, like really close to like to our palms and uh, on our computers and things like that.